Shalom, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Shalom, shalom, Israel. Most high in Christ. Bless to all of you all in the classroom and those that might be watching online. Uh, we got a good topic for you all today. The topic of today's class is pagan Christianity for dummies. That's right. Pagan Christianity for dummies. All right. So in today's class, what we're going to do is we're going to seek out of the Holy Bible to find out whether or not Christianity actually follows the word of God. All right. We're going to find out if Christianity actually worships the one true God of the universe. All right, so we're going to start this out in John chapter 8, verse 32. The book of John chapter 8 and verse 32. Bring it out. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Right, so that's what we're going to find out today. We're going to find out the truth according to the Bible about Christianity or who we should be. How are we, how are we supposed to be good Christians? All right, give me that in um, Psalms chapter 111. We're going to move pretty fast because I got a lot of stuff to cover. Come on. The book of Psalms chapter 119 and verse 142. Let's go. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. And the what? And thy law is the truth. So this is what we're going to base everything off of, God's laws. That's right. It says God's laws are the truth. All right. So now, um, IT. If you would, give me the first um, photo that I have up there talking about uh, Christianity. All right. So, shocking truth. Christianity doesn't teach the Bible. It uses the Bible out of context to teach Christianity. Ain't that something this? right there? So, we're going to find out all about pagan christianity today all right i'll uh, go to colossians chapter 2 verse 8 you're gonna learn today watch this here's your first warning to all to all my christians online to all my christian pastors this is a warning to you watch this hey. colossians chapter 2 and verse 8 come Bring on it out. beware it says what beware go ahead lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, mm -hmm. after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. So this is the first warning to Christianity. It says what? Read it again. Beware of lest, what? Lest any man. Lest any who? Lest any man spoil you. Now, how are these men going to spoil you? Through philosophy uh -huh. and vain deceit. Mm -hmm. Come on. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world. And not after Christ. All right. So now, beware. Beware is a warning. So this is a warning that the Bible has given us. It says, beware, lest any man spoil you. So to beware means to be on guard against something. Right. For an example, you might say to drivers, beware of ice on the road. So there's a potential hazard that you're looking for. But in this case, it says beware of any man. All right. Now, um, IT, can you give me the definition of philosophy? That's some things we want to find out. Definition for philosophy. All right. Can you blow it up a little bit? All right. Uh, I'll read it. Philosophy. The study of the fundamental nature of knowledge, reality, and existence, especially when considered as an academic discipline. So God's laws are our discipline, all right? But it says philosophy is the fundamental nature of knowledge and reality or existence. So that's what we're going to find out, what, what philosophy has destroyed us. Now, um, if you will, give me the definition of rudiments. Rudiments. And I want you to read that scripture again once we get this definition of rudiment. All of, these, all of this is going to tie together. You're going you're gonna to have to listen real good, get your pen, 
take little side notes, all right? Come on, IT, rudiment. Rudiment. The first principles of a subject, all right? So the Bible says, read that scripture for me again, officer. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8. Bring it out. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy. So and philosophy, they're going to spoil you through the fundamental nature of knowledge. Right. They're going to screw you over in your fundamentals, meaning grade schools, elementary, where you get those, that, those things from. They're going to teach you contrary or something perverse from the word of God. Right. Right. And vain deceit after the tradition of men. So, so the things that we're going to cover today are traditions of men. And what else? Come on. After the rudiments of the world. So what are those rudiments? Rudiments are the first principles. So that's what we're talking about. First principles. All right. So you have to be aware. You have to be careful that you don't let a man build your foundation up on sand. That's All right. You don't want to be how they say um, uh, uh, built up on the world. So give me that in James chapter four, verse four. The book of James chapter four and verse four. Read it out. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Right. So. What we're going to do, we're going to start checking those fundamentals and that philosophy that's in Christianity. And we're going to compare it to the Bible. Because the Christian church uses the Bible out of context to teach Christianity. The hell is this? Right. All right. So what needs to happen is in this lesson, you need to listen, understand, and recalibrate your mind. That's right. So now give me um, Hebrews 5 and 12. Try to move a little fast. Come on. Let's go. Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 12. Bring it out. For when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. All right. That's it. So what is it? What is that saying? For the time when you ought to be a teacher, when you standing in front of the pulpit, you got over five, six hundred people in your church it says what ye have need that one teach you again so that's what we're gonna do today we're gonna teach you again the what come on which be the first principles of the oracles of god so what is another word for first principle rudiments we're gonna teach you the rudiments of the most high god hey. all right so uh give me that first link let's find out a little something about christianity you want the rest of this yeah yeah finish it up and are become such as have need of meat, milk and not of strong meat. So, again, we got the milk bottles and we passing them out today. Right. So get ready. We're we going to burp you afterwards. You're going right? to learn today. Come on with that link. Give me that first link. Um, Christians. Uh, I'll read it. Go up just a little bit. Uh, I'm sorry. Go down. Christians. Christians are people who follow or adhere to Christianity. You hear that? It says they adhere to Christianity. But what do we adhere to in here? We adhere to God's laws. That's right. It says a monotheistic Abrahamic religion. Based on the life and teachings of Jesus Christ, they form the largest religion, religious community in the world. The word Christ and Christian derive from the coined Greek title Christos, a translation of the biblical Hebrew term Mashiach usually rendered as Messiah in English. While there are diverse interpretations of Christianity, which sometimes conflict, they are, they are united in believing that Jesus has a unique significance. The term Christian used as an adjective is descriptive of anything associated with Christianity or Christian churches. So though this is what we're going to hone in on. It says the term Christian is used as an adjective. It's descriptive of anything associated with Christianity or Christian churches. In a proverbial sense, all that is noble, good, and Christ-like. All right? So it says 
Christianity is something that is noble, good, and Christ-like. That's the spirit that the Christian pastors have on them. They, all, they have the, the neckties up. They want to be clean with their suits, huh? right? It says they, they want to look noble and good, and they want to appear to be Christ-like. But what it says next, it says, it does not have a meaning of, of Christ or related or pertaining to Christ. So Christianity has nothing to do with Christ. That's right. Like we read um, in the beginning. What did it say? It said Christianity uh, uses the Bible to teach Christianity. How, how did it go? Pull it, go back up. I'm messing it up. Let me find it real quick. It says, um, shocking truth, Christianity doesn't teach the Bible. It uses the Bible out of context to teach Christianity. All right? So that's what we, that's what we understand, that Christianity is its own religion in a nutshell. They don't follow the commandments of the Bible, and we're going to make sure that you understand that today. You don't find All right? it suspicious? So basically, Christianity is a knockoff. It's a knockoff of what we're supposed to be doing. So give me that in Matthew chapter Word. 24, verse, uh, verse 4 and 5. Let's go. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 4. Bring it out. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. Hold and on. Hold on. What, what's the first word say? Jesus, Jesus answered and said unto them what? Take heed. That's a warning again. Just like beware. It says, take heed. That, take heed to what? That no man that deceive what? you. No man. No man. Come on. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. All right. And that's, that's basically all your Christian pastors. <laughs> many of them come. They, they say that I am Christ. But they don't teach you the Bible. They don't teach you the rudiments of the word of God. They don't teach you right. the precepts of the Bible. All right. So now we're going to kind of get into the lesson a little bit. Give me Jeremiah chapter 10. And start at verse 1. We're going to find out something. Come on. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 10, and verse 1. Read. Read Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. O who? O house of Israel. No, God love everybody. He's talking to everybody. O house of Israel. No, that ain't what my pastor said. Pastor said that all you got to do is believe in your heart that Christ died. He was risen from the dead. That... Anybody can be saved. What does it say? Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. That got to be talking about a spiritual Israel. Come on, read. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. Okay, it says, learn not the way of the heathen. Come on. Right. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. Mm -hmm. For the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. And one... For right. one, that's it. So, um, go give me that. Um, give me that definition of a uh, pagan. Pagan. All right. Can you read that for me, also? Yes, sir. Pagan, a person who practices a contemporary form of paganism. All right. Um, go down some. Go up. Keep going. Uh, read some of those for me. Read number two. Two A. Old-fashioned plus often offensive. A person who is not religious or whose religion is not Judaism, Islam, or especially Christianity. All right, so a heathen would be somebody that does not fall into any of these categories. But I'm going to say they fall into all of those categories. <laughs> all right, uh, read the last one. A follower of a polytheistic religion as in ancient Rome or Greece. Click on heathen. All right. Um, read that. That's pretty much the same thing. Read that. Heathen. A person who is not religious or whose religion is not Judaism, Islam, or especially Christianity. Okay. All right, um, go down. I'm looking for... Go back, go back to the... Uh, I, I think I know what you're looking for. Go back to the, the previous definition of pagan, the first definition of it. Right. Yeah, right there. Right there. I want uh, Wicca. Wicca. All right. All right, read that for me, officer. 
Wicca, noun, a religion influenced by pre-Christian beliefs. It's influenced by what? Pre-Christian beliefs. Okay, come on. And practices of Western Europe that affirms the existence of supernatural power. All right, listen up. Such as magic. Such as what? Such as magic. All right. Devil. And of both male and female deities who inhere in nature and that emphasizes ritual observance of seasonal and life cycles. All right. Now, that's a lot to, uh, to, to get into your, your biscuit right here. It Her. says a religion, Wicca is a religion influenced by pre-Christian beliefs. And one of those beliefs, it says uh, Europe in Western Europe that affirms the existence of supernatural powers such as magic and of both male and female deities. All right. It says who adhere in nature and that emphasizes ritual observances. That's the key word. Ritual observances of seasonal and life cycles. All right. So now. Uh, uh, let me see. Those two things are, are very, very similar. Pagans and Wiccans. They're very similar. So now here comes the recalibration. Here comes the recalibration. We just read that they observe, uh, what does it say? Nature and life cycles. Right. All right. So now give me that in Ecclesiasticus chapter 33, verse 7. Let's go. So let's find out the difference because this is a pre-Christian belief. Come on. The book of Ecclesiasticus, Sirach, chapter 33 and verse 7. Bring it out. Why doth one day excel another? Why does one day excel another? The Bible is going to answer that for you. Come on. When is all the light of every day in the year is of the sun? Come on. By the knowledge of the Lord, they were distinguished. By the what? By the knowledge of the Lord, they were distinguished. You remember it says God's laws are everlasting righteousness. So by the knowledge of the Lord were they uh, distinguished. Come on. Right. And he altered seasons. He altered what? Seasons and feasts. That's going into the year and the things that happen in the year. Feasts, which, which we're going to cover in, uh, going into class. Come on. Some of them hath he made high days. So some of these days, the most high God establishes high days. Right. Come on. And hallowed them. And some of them hath he made ordinary days. All right. So. By the knowledge of the Lord is how these days are distinguished. So we're going to take right. some time to look at the knowledge of the Lord and distinguish some days. All right. Um, give me Genesis chapter 1 and verse 14. Watch this. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 14. Bring it out. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of heaven, of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons. Let them be for what? For signs and for seasons. For signs and for seasons. That's what the Lord said. The Lord said, let them be for signs and for seasons that I ordain. Come on. And for days and years. For days and years. All right. Give me Sirach chapter 43. We're going to speed up. The book of Sirach. Chapter 43 and verse 6. He made the moon also to serve in her season for a declaration of times. So the moon is a what? A declaration of times. That's as long right. as you're following after the Most High, he's going to tell you what to do. You don't have to make up your own uh, declarations. Read on. And a sign of the world. And a what? And a sign of the world. The, the moon is a sign. Come on. From the moon is the sign of feast. Is it what? Is the sign of feast. All right. A light that decreaseth in her perfection. Come on. The month is called after her name. Says the month is called after her name. That's now you right. gotta have days before you can have a month. So to all of you all that's trying to say that the moon uh, deter, uh, depicts the Sabbath, you, you're wrong. You're mistaken. You have to have days before you can have a month. All right. Come on. Increasing wonderfully in her changing, being an instrument of the armies above. Now, the moon is a what? An instrument of the armies above. So the Most High made this moon, and he made it an instrument, and he taught us how to use it. Oh, praise the... That's right. So Psalms 96, verse 5. We're going to speed up a little bit. 
All right, so now we're jumping into this thing, pagan Christianity for dummies. So we just found out that Wicca is a pre-Christian religion that believes in magic, supernatural powers. They observe rituals uh, that pertain to the year and the cycle of the year. The hell is this? Come on. The book of Psalms, chapter 96 and verse 5. Bring it out. For all the gods of the nations are idols. Wait, 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 wait a minute. So you mean to tell me that Buddha is a what? Buddha is an idol. Krishna is an idol. Right. That white Jesus that you got hanging up in your, your living room, that's an idol. That's right. I bet you didn't know that either. You're going to learn today. Read it again. For all the gods of the nations are idols. But what? But the Lord made the heavens. But what? But the Lord made the heavens. So we should take instruction from the man that made the heavens. That's right. He's going to tell you what they're for and how to use them. All right. So now let's go to Leviticus chapter 23. We're going we're gonna to get into something. So this right here is, is pagan Christianity for dummies. If you don't know, now you know. Take a look. It's in a book. That's right. A reading rainbow. Let's go. Let's go. Bring it out. Leviticus chapter 23. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23, and verse 1. Bring it out. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. He's speaking to who again? Speak unto the children of Israel. For those of you that don't know, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we are the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Right. This book is written to us. This is our history book. If That's you ever wanted right. to know what happened to you before uh, getting here on the shores of America in 1619, it's written in the book. Just like I said, take a look. It's in a book. Come on. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. All right. So now we're going to take a look at the Lord's feast compared to what the Christian church keeps. I don't see them keeping the feast of the Lord. It's written right here in the book. Again, the shocking truth is that Christianity doesn't teach the Bible. Right. They use the Bible out of context to do what? Teach Christianity. You All right. find that suspicious. Well, we find that very suspicious. Right. All right, so read on. Leviticus 20, uh, 23. Come on. Verse 3. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest, an holy convocation. You shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. It's the what? It is the Sabbath of the Lord and all your dwellings. All right, so we're going to slow it down a little bit. Can you um, put that photo of the calendar up there? And uh, I need you to read that script again for me. All praises. IT. All right, so read that again. Read Leviticus that chapter 23 again. and verse, uh, verse 3. Six days shall work be done. So how many days it is, is it in a week? There's seven days in a week. Damn. What's the first day of the week? When you look at the calendar... I know a lot of us think the first day of the week is Monday, but to your surprise, the first day is what? Sunday. Read it again. Six days shall work be done. Come on. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. So now, let's do a little bit of um, math. Sunday being the first day of the week. So let's count six more days. So you got one, two, three, four, five, Six, uh-oh, seven. So from Friday night sundown to Saturday night sundown is what? The Sabbath of the Lord God of Israel. Right. You might not be worshiping the Lord God of Israel if you are keeping what? The first day of the week. That is Sunday, ancient sun worship. But we're going to get into that a little later. Come on, read on. Unholy convocation. You shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. All right, it's the Sabbath of the Lord. All right, IT, give me link number three. Now, this is where it gets interesting. All right? Link number three. Whenever you're ready, pull it up. Let's go. Let's go, let's go. Read that again, officer. Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 3. Bring it out. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. Unholy convocation. You shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. 
Right. So the seventh day, the Lord didn't name any of these days, but he said the seventh day is the Sabbath. And, what, and there's some things that you can and cannot do on the Sabbath. All right. Give me some of those laws for the Sabbath also. Give me, um, give me Nehemiah book, chapter 10. Okay. The book of Nehemiah chapter 10 30. and verse 31. Bring it out. And if the people of the land bring where or any victuals on the Sabbath day to sell. On the Sabbath day to do what? To sell. All right. So keep that in mind. If they bring anything anywhere to sell. Come on. That we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath. That you should not do what? That we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath. So what does that mean? We wouldn't buy it on them on the Sabbath. No buying on the Sabbath. Come on. Or on the holy day. And that we would leave the seventh year and the exaction of every debt. All right. So that's for you all in pagan Christianity. These are the rudiments of the Bible. These are the yeah. precepts. These are the, the, the foundation that you should be learning. All right. I see y'all ready. Yes, sir. All right. All right. Blow it up. Give me the um, give me the right side. I need a little bit bigger. Go to uh, January. Just give me January. Go up. Go up. I'm sorry. Go down. All right. Can you blow that up a little bit bigger? All right. So read what you got right there. You're going to learn today. January, named for the Roman god Janus. Epiphany, a.k.a. Little Christmas, begins. Epiphany tide, Sundays after Epiphany until Shrove tide, right. pre-Lent, set up as the day the wise men brought gifts, observed by marking their doors with the three kings' names. All right, come on. New Year's Day. Set up in 18, 1582 by Pope Gregory VIII. Now watch this. Prior to this, New Year's Day was based on the biblical New Year set up in Exodus 12. Right. So what this is saying is that the New Year's is not in January. But we're going to find out that the New Year's comes in around the end of March, early April. That's it. All right. So biblically, this would be the, uh, what is that, the 11th? 12th month? 10th to 11th. 10th to 11th month? All right. Yeah, correct. 10th to, uh, 10th to 11th month. All right. Now, show me that picture in that corner. You see that little two-headed thing? That's Janus. That's the Roman god Janus, the two-headed figure um, of beginnings and endings or something of that nature. The devil. Doorways. Right, doorways. All right. So now, let's go to... The next one. Give me uh, February. So what we doing? What we doing? We finding out some things that we didn't know. There, there's a lot of paganism intertwined with Christianity. All right? A lot of the things that you celebrate, the ritual observances that you have no idea where you get them from, but you just ignorantly partake in those things. Right. Right. We're going to show you where they come from. All right? So come on. Give me that February. February, named for an ancient Roman festival of purification called Februa. All right, so the month of February gets its name after a festival of purification called Februa. Come on. Valentine's Day. Now, these are all the, the so-called ritual observances that Christianity will partake in. They say that they serve the Most High God of the Bible, but then you're going to find out they don't keep or observe the feast that the Lord set up. They observe traditions and rudiments of the world. The Come hell on. is this? Valentine's Day, Feast of St. Valentine, Modern Romance Day, Cupid, Son of Venus and Mars, Patron Deity of Intercourse. All right, so you remember in the beginning of the class that it says Wiccans, they, they believe in male and female deities, superpowers, supernatural powers, and uh, what was the other one? Uh, uh, magic. 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 All right. So what I want you to take note of, it says Valentine's Day, Feast of St. Valentine, Modern Romance Day, Cupid. 
the son of Venus and Mars, patron deity of intercourse. That's something we want to highlight. Keep reading. Shrove Tide, Carnival, Mardi Gras. Uh-oh, a lot of y'all know about that Mardi Gras. Come Fat, on. Fat Tuesday. Fat Tuesday. Go down. Now, this right here we're going to find in Catholicism. Watch this. Read. Ash Wednesday. Ash Wednesday. That has nothing to do with the Bible. Ash Wednesday is a tradition and rudiment of the world. Read. Begins Lent. Six weeks leading up to Easter. So watch this. This says that Ash Wednesday begins Lent. A lot of y'all in the Catholic, Catholic churches, y'all put that little cross on your forehead. Huh? Right? Ash Wednesday. And it says it begins Lent, six weeks leading up to what? Easter. All of these things are connected. Read on. Ancient time of the fast slash weeping of Tammuz. Wow. So now in February, we got a lot of stuff going on that we never knew about. So now we're going to put all this together. You got Cupid, the son of Venus, uh, um, Venus and Mars. You got Ash Wednesday, Lent and Easter. Then you have the weeping for Tammuz. What do all these things have in common? What do all these things have in common? So now let's go to the Bible and find out what we should be keeping in the month of February. That's according to God's laws. The, the most I said, he, he made the moon and the, and, the, uh, and the sun, and he set those up for signs of feast. Come on, read. Get um, yeah, Esther chapter 9, verse 20, just start at 20. Yes, sir. Esther, chapter 9 and verse 20. Bring it out. And Mordecai wrote these things and sent letters unto all the Jews that were in all the provinces of the king Ahasuerus, both nigh and far, to establish this among them, that they should keep the 14th day of the month Adar. The 14th day of the month Adar. The month Adar is the 11th or 12th month. All right. When you look it up, it'll tell you it's the, the 11th or 12th month. Come on. And the 15th day of the same yearly as the days wherein the Jews rested from their enemies and the month which was turned unto them from sorrow to joy and from mourning into a good day that they should make that they should make them days of feasting and joy. They should make days of what? Feasting and joy. Come on. And of sending portions one to another and gifts to the poor. All right. So this this is a, um, a high day uh, that we observe. It's called the Feast of Purim. And that's a biblical feast. You can find it written in the Bible. That's right. But during those months, when you read the scriptures, you won't find anything about Cupid. You won't find anything about Mars. You won't find anything about uh, Ash Wednesday or <laughs> Lent or Easter. Hmm. Right. I wonder where they get that from. All right. Find that so now in that same month, we have another a, a day that we observe. What is it? Give me that in 2 Maccabees. 2 Maccabees chapter 15, verses 33. Watch this. And Let's on go. your own time, you can go back and read the rest of these chapters. But there's a lot to cover, so we're going to keep it moving. Come on. The book of 2 Maccabees chapter 15 and verse 33. Bring it out. And when he had cut out the tongue of that ungodly Nicanor, he commanded that they should give it by pieces unto the fowls and hang up the reward of his madness before the temple. Verse 36. And they ordained all with a common decree in no case to let that day pass without solemnity, but to celebrate the 13th day. But to what? But to celebrate the 13th day uh -huh. of the 12th month. Of what month? Of the 12th month. Come on. Which in the Syrian tongue is called Adar. The day before Mordecai's day. Come on. Read. Thus it went with Nicanor. And from the that time forth, the Hebrews and the had the city in their power. And here I will make an end. Right. So in the month of February, we are not keeping... Valentine's Day, we are not putting ash on our foreheads. We are not um, getting ready for Lent. Right. Oh, we, we're not even going to worship Tammuz, but you're going to find out of something today about that Christianity. All right? So now, give, give me the next month. You're going to learn today. Give me uh, March. March. March, named for Mars, the Roman god of war. 
a.k.a. Greek God Aries. So you see the figure to the right. That is a figure of Mars or who is known as Aries. All right. That's that's Aries right there. But we're going to find out something about this. All of this stuff is intertwined. Go back. All right. Read it. St. Patrick's Day, celebrated as a Catholic saint, actually a feast-keeping Jew. All right, so so March. All right, now, I don't know, um, IT, you got that link? Um, click, click on the link for Aries. We wanna, I want to show you something real quick. All right. Ares is a god in Greek mythology. He is the god of savage war and bloodlust and represents the untamed wild aspect of conflict. He is one of the 12 Olympians. His parents are Zeus and Hera. He had a twin sister called Eris. Er er Neither parent liked him. He is considered murderous and bloody. In the Trojan War, he fought on the side of the Trojans. He had six children with Aphrodite, homeland strikes. Go down to consorts. Keep going, keep going. All right there, right there. Um, it says consort of children. It says Aphrodite and various others. And let's see. So one of, one of Ares' consorts or lovers was Aphrodite. All right, now, would you, it says, was he siblings? Go down, siblings. It says, his sibling was who? Aphrodite. So, apparently, Ares had children by his sister. Huh? All right, now you have, um, move that, Apollos, Artemis, Athena, Dionysus. All of these names are relevant to today's class. Dionysus. Okay, um, you can go back out. All right. So now, just keep in mind, Ares had six children with Aphrodite. Um, did we read about Zeus? It says, um, go back to, to what we just left. Who, who is the father of Ares? Um, click the link again. Yeah, parents. Zeus and Hera is, are the parents of Ares. All right. This might not be making sense to you right now, but by the end of the lessons, it's all going to make sense. That's it. All right, so now let's go to let's go to April. Let's go to April. Yeah, you could keep it up. All right, April. Read April. Let's go. April, named after goddess Aphrodite. Wait a minute. Did we just hear that name? So all of these months have something in common. Everything has something in common. It says April is named after the goddess Aphrodite, a.k.a. Venus. They got several names that we got to keep up with. Read on. Around the 5th century, the Anglo-Saxons referred to April as Oster Mon Monath or Aster Monath, a reference to the goddess Eoster. Right. So basically that means Easter month. Come on. W whose feast was celebrated during this month. Remember, we, we talked about the Wiccan, which is a pre-Christian religion. They come with ritual observances. And these are some of the ritual observances that we're going to talk about. Hey. Read. April Fool's Day, so named to belittle those that would not change the biblical new year. So the biblical new year, when we first read, is found in Exodus chapter 12, which we're about to read. But it says, April Fool's Day, so named to belittle those that would not change the biblical new year. So now we understand that today we would be the April Fool's because we know when the real year starts. Right. Read on. Easter, sometimes March. See, quarter decimal controversy takes the place of the first three feasts of God. All right, so the quarter decimal controversy takes the place of the first three feasts of God. So they're telling you what they're doing. Christianity does not teach the Bible. It uses the Bible out of context to do what? Teach Christianity. Read that again. 
Easter, sometimes March. See, quarter decimal controversy takes the place of the first three feasts of God. So now let's find out what takes place of the first three feasts of God. Read, Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. Y'all Christians know about that. Read, the sixth Sunday of Lent. So that goes back to what we read in, what was it, January? It says... Ash uh, what Wednesday. Was it? Ash Wednesday begins Lent. Now we're finding out that what we're reading, Palm Sunday, is the sixth Sunday of Lent. Read. Holy Monday, mm -hmm. Holy Tuesday, Holy Wednesday, or Spy Wednesday, Moundy Thursday, or Holy Thursday, Good Friday. What? Good Friday. What? Bruh. Good Friday. Come on. And Holy Saturday or Black Saturday. Black Saturday. Why they got to be a Black Saturday? Come on, read. Easter Sunday. Christmas. Easter Sunday. These are rudiments and tradition of the world. But what do we <laughs> read in Colossians? It says, be aware. So we have you be aware of what's going on. What you have been born into. The traditions that you latched on to without ever asking questions. Read. Easter egg hunts and bunnies. Fertility rites of the goddess Ishtar. So again, fertility rituals of the goddess or these deities that pre-Christians worship. Read. Sunrise services on Sunday. Hold up. Wait a minute. Sunrise services on Sunday in Damn. honor of wow. the sun god. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So what are we doing? What are we doing? We read back in... um. In the beginning of the lesson that the Lord chose the seventh day. But you worshiping on Sunday, it says what? Sunrise service on Sunday. In this? honor of who? The sun God. One more time. Sunrise services on Sunday in honor of the sun God. You let that sink into your biscuit a little bit. Read on. Right. If, if you are worshiping on Sunday on a sunrise... You might be a pagan. You Ruh. dead. Repent, brother. Come on, read. Earth Day, honoring earth and peace. So again, Wiccans, they follow after the cycles of the year. They follow magic and supernatural powers. Pre-Christian religion. Hmm. Come on. Now, <laughs> let's, go to, um, let's go back to Leviticus. Read what we got in Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 5. Bring it out. In the 14th day of the first month. Of and what month? Of the first month. So, so again, April, um, April on the calendar is the fifth month? Fourth. Fourth month. But it's the first biblical day of the year for us. All right? You remember that. It's the first it's the beginning of the new year for believers of the Bible, hey. for the Israelites. Come on. Right. Verse 5. In the 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. Is the Lord's what? Is the Lord's Passover. Read. And on the 15th day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread unto the Lord. Seven days ye must eat unleavened bread. And the first day ye shall have an holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. All right. So we're finding out that there is a feast of the Lord ordained that we should keep. Put the, um, put the photo back up. It has nothing to do with those days right there. Come on. Go back to the, go back to the photo, IT. You keep that on hand. You can put me in the corner. We're Let's gonna stay, go. We're going to stay right on that. Read it again also. Leviticus chapter 23 and verse, you want to start back at verse 5 or? Yeah, start at verse 5. Verse 5. In the 14th day of the first month. In at, the 14th day of what month? Of the first month. Come on. At even is the Lord's Passover. Mm -hmm. And on the 15th day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread unto the Lord. All right. So, so now, if these are the feasts ordained by the Most High God, what are we doing with um, Lent and uh, Easter Sunday. 
break. You, you're seeing where this is coming from. All right, read on. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. In the first day you shall have an holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. But you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days. And the seventh day is an holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. All right. All right. So now let's, um, let's, um, let, let, me, let me point some things out right quick. So Aphrodite, a.k.a. Venus. Um, that's a photo of her on the side right there. Um, scroll down some more. Okay. All right. So remember this. Lent, sixth six Sunday of Lent, Good Friday, Easter Sunday, sunrise service. All right. And these are in honor of the sun god and then also Ishtar. All right. So now uh, make that a little small IT. I can't, I can't see that. All right. So now uh, we on May. Read what you got, Austin. May, named after the Greek goddess Maya. Maya was considered a nurturer and an earth goddess. Okay. May Day, a.k.a. Beltane, celebrated by picnics, collected flowers, made into reefs with fruits to represent fertility and new life. What? To keep until Midsummer's Eve when they are burnt in a bonfire. All right. So there's a lot that's coming out right here. It says May Day. Celebrated by picnics, collecting flowers, made into wreaths with fruit to represent fertility. So, sisters, if you ever out shopping around May and you see those wreaths, do not buy them and put them on your front door. What do they represent? Fertility and new life to keep until midsummer when they are burned in a what? Bonfire. So all of these things are interconnected. I know around this time of the year, there's a lot of bonfires going on, but you don't really understand where you get these traditions from. But we're going to help you today. Read on. Maypole. Maypole, phallic symbol. Hold on. How many of y'all, when you was in uh, school, would, they would take you out there and you would decorate the maypole? Right. I know we decorated the maypole. I never knew what it meant. But today, you're going to learn. What That's is the maypole? Right? Phallic symbol. What is a phallic? A phallic is a penis. Rod. So the maypole is a penis symbol representing what? Representing fertility. Is a branch from a fruit tree, usually pomegranate or almond, bearing tender young leaves, decorated with flowers, fruits, and colorful ribbons, and adorned with small files of honey, sweet wine, and olive oil all of which symbolize fertility. So remember Bruh. those things. All of this, that, that maypole, that goes into a phallic symbol. And when we get into the lesson, you're going to find out why that maypole stands alone, why it's a phallic symbol. All right? So now let's um, go to, uh, let's keep reading. Is it more on that? Memorial Day, holiday remembering Americans lost in battle. Mother's Day. All right. So again, we got, uh, where does it say? Uh, doo -doo -doo. Named after the Greek goddess Maya. That goes into all of those male and female deities. We're seeing them. We're seeing the male and female deities that Christianity ignorantly worships. They don't even know that they're worshiping these deities, but they do it. And they do it with, um, with, a, with their whole heart. All right. All right. Um, you, so let's go to the next month. Let's go to June. June. Let's go. Named after the Roman goddess Juno. All right. And that's a picture of the Roman goddess Juno on the right. Come on. The god of marriage and childbirth and the wife of Jupiter, king of the gods. So, again, she's the wife of Jupiter, the king of gods. Um, I see there's a link up under that link number five. Watch this. Read that. Jupiter. From Protolithic, the Sky Father, also known as Jove, is the god of the sky and thunder and king of the gods in ancient Rome, ancient Roman religion and mythology. 
Jupiter was the chief deity of Roman state religion throughout the Republican and Imperial eras. Watch this. Until Christianity became the dominant religion of the empire. In Roman mythology, he negotiates with Numa Pompilius, the second king of Rome, to establish principles of Roman religion such as offering or sacrifice. Right, basically rituals. So they, they're getting their understanding from who? Jupiter. They don't, they don't worship the God of Israel. They worship all of these ancient deities right here. The hell is this? Uh, let's see. Go. Keep, keep reading. Jupiter is usually thought to have originated as a sky god. His identifying implement is the thunderbolt, and Watch his this. and his primary sacred animal is the eagle. Is the what? The eagle. All right, come on. Which Damn held it. precedence over other birds in the taking of auspices. All right. So now go down to um, go down to consorts. Just well, On go the right up. hand side. All right. Um, Consort is Juno. All right, and let's see. Children. Children. Mars, Vulcan, Bologna, Angelos, Lucina, Juventus, Minerva, and Hercules. Okay, um, go down some more. The Greek equivalent. Yeah, Greek equivalent to what? What is the Greek equivalent? Zeus. Zeus is the same thing as who? Jupiter. Message. All right. So again, all this is going to make sense by the end of the lesson. All right, go back. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Modern day Pride Month honoring LGBTQ. Keep going. Juneteenth, emancipation of slaves. Juneteenth is in there. Come on. Father's Day. Oh, wow. Father's Day. All right. So now, uh, where are we at? Give me August. I'm sorry, July. Go up some. So July is what? July is the seventh calendar month, but it's the fourth, fifth biblical month. Right. All right. I forgot to say that, but let's go. July. Named after Roman ruler Julius Caesar. Critical role in the rise of the Roman Empire. Helped develop the Julian calendar. Fourth of July, American Independence Day, and Parents Day. All right, keep reading. Uh, let's go on to August. We're going to speed up a little bit. August, named to honor the first Roman emperor and grandnephew of Julius Caesar, Augustus Caesar, 63 BC to AD 14. All right, so now we're finding out all, all about these different months and what ritual observances go along with these months. Come on. Go Augustus, to, uh, the first Roman emperor. Yeah, yeah, you just read that. Go, go to uh, September. Watch this. So now, now things start to get a little interesting. Come on. September. September comes from the Latin word septum, meaning seven. It means what? Seven. All right. Because it was the seventh month of the early Roman calendar. All right. So now we're going to go to the scriptures and find out. What we are observing during these times. September is the sixth, seventh month, and it's the ninth, I'm sorry, sixth, seventh biblical month, and it's the ninth calendar month. Right. Message. All right. Come on. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23 and verse 23. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, In what month? In the seventh month, In the first day of the month, Shall ye have a Sabbath, A memorial of blowing of trumpets, An holy convocation. So what is ordained by the Most High God? Most High God is the memorial of the blowing of trumpets. That's you can find right. this in the Bible. All right? But all of these other things have nothing to do with Christ. And we haven't even got to the root of it yet. We're going to speed up. Come on. Is that it? Yes, sir. All right. Um, let's go to October. Pull it, put the um, photo back up. October. Named from the Roman word for eighth, Octavius. So October is the Roman word for eight. Just like an octopus. So you find out now that it makes sense, October being the eighth month. 
Read. Octavius, as it was the eighth month of the Roman year. Halloween. All right. All Hallows Eve. The devil. Renamed pagan festival of San Ain. Or properly pronounced Samhain. Samhain. All right. It says renamed pagan festival of Samhain. Read on. When it was believed the boundary between the world, this world, and the next become especially thin, mm -hmm. enabling them to connect with the dead. Right. Read on. What? All Saints Day. Also called All, all Hallows Day, Hallowmas, or Feast of All Saints. And what is it commemorating? A day commemorating all the saints of the church, both known and unknown, who have attained heaven. Well, you won't find that in the scripture. Don't you find that suspicious? You don't find You're... that suspicious? Right. So Halloween, hey. Halloween. Now this right here, this, we're going to find out in the lesson, it has uh, what you would say, uh, supernatural meaning to pagans or pre-Christians. All right. Um, Leviticus chapter 23 and 33. Let's, let's get that. The book of Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 33. Bring it out. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, speak unto the children of Israel saying, the 15th day of this seventh month. The 15th day of what month? This seventh month. Uh-huh shall be the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. So what we're going to be celebrating while the world is going out and trick-or-treating, we're going to be keeping the Feast of Tabernacles. That is a biblical high holy day. That's found right. Written in the scriptures. But you won't find the rituals on how to observe Halloween in the Bible. It's, hey. not, it's not written there. It's not, going, it's not going to happen. Read on. On the first day shall be in holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. Seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. On the eighth day shall be an holy convocation unto you, and you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It is a solemn assembly. It is a what? It is a solemn assembly, and you shall do no servile work therein. All right. So, again, we're finding all of what we're supposed to be doing in the scriptures. How do you explain Halloween? How do you explain Valentine's Day? Who are you worshiping out there? I already told you that Sunday worship is in worship of the sun god. All right? right? So when has Christianity ever mentioned the feast days? When has your pastor ever told you that the Most High God created these days for us to observe as our heritage? Right. To bring us back to being the people that we're supposed to be. To, to make us a special people to set us apart. These are the things that set us apart. When you're keeping Christmas, Easter, New Year, all these things, you, there's nothing special about you. All right, so put the photo back up, and let's go to the 11th month, November, which is um, actually the 8th or 9th Hebrew month, approximately. November, from the Latin word novum, nine. So the November comes from the word novum, which means what? Nine. nine. Read. Because this was the ninth month of the early Roman calendar. Thanksgiving, American holiday of giving thanks for the harvest. Scholars believe the first celebration of Thanksgiving in America to be a late feast of tabernacles. So they know what, what we don't. They know that this is around the same time as tabernacles, but they're not going to keep tabernacles. They're not going to actually bring you back to your heritage. They're going to make you keep their traditions. Read on. Note, the shofar filled with the bountiful harvest. And we call that thing the cornucopia, and they throw it right in our face. It's a shofar full of the first fruit. That's crazy. Come on. Black Friday. Black Friday. All right, now let's go to uh, December. Yes. All right, read it. December, from the Latin word decum, 10. So decum, or deca, like decimal, meaning 10. Read. Because historically, this was the 10th month of the early Roman calendar. Read. Yule, listed as a pagan Sabbath. All right, so this right here, Yule is a pagan what? Sabbath. A pagan Sabbath. That's, 
right around the same time as Christmas. A lot of you all are observing these pagan Sabbaths and don't realize it. Come on. Yuletide, Christmas tide. Winter solace. Uh oh, winter solstice is the what? Rebirth of the sun. Rebirth of the sun. So on Sunday, you're, you're doing what? Who are you worshiping? The sun god. It's all about to start making sense now. Come on. Christmas, celebrated as the birthday of Jesus. Wow. Come on. New Year's Eve. All right. So now, let's go to 1 Maccabees and find out if the Lord ordained any days that we should be keeping as the people of God. Because, again, Christianity doesn't teach the Bible. It uses the Bible out of context to teach Christianity. Good. First Maccabees chapter 4. Come on. First Maccabees chapter 4 and verse 56. And so they kept the dedication of the altar eight days and offered burnt offerings with gladness and sacrificed the sacrifice of deliverance and praise. They decked also the forefront of the temple with crowns of gold and with shields. Say they did what? They decked also the forefront of the temple with crowns of gold and with shields. Come on. And the gates and the chambers they renewed All and right. hang doors upon them. All right. So um, is that, give me that in um, John chapter 10. John chapter 10. Yeah, watch this. Who else keep the dedication? Since, since everybody want to say, um, you know, Christ was born in December, they get it from this right here, from the rudiments of the world. Read. The book of John, chapter 10 and verse 22. Bring it out. And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of, ded of the dedication. And it was winter. It was when? And it was winter. And who kept it? And Jesus. And who? And Jesus. Did what? Walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Right. He walked inside the temple. It was cold outside. It was the mean season. He went inside of Solomon's porch. All right? That's December. That's dedication. You gonna That's what we today. keep. We don't keep Christmas. Santa Claus or Satan Claus. We don't, we don't worship those things. But you might be a pagan if you keep in those days. All right. So um, put it back up. I want to I want to point out something again. I'll just say it. It says the winter solstice, the rebirth of the sun. That's, it. that's the cycle of the year that's being worshipped here. All right. So we read all this for what? To do a contrast of the holy days to pagan Christianity's hella days. Right. All right. The God they worship is incomparable to the God of Israel. Right. But how did we get mixed up into all of these hell days? Go back to uh, Jeremiah chapter 10. Watch this. The book of Jeremiah chapter 10 and verse 1. Bring it out. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord. Watch this. Learn not the way of the heathen. So everything that we just read, that goes into the way of the heathen which heathen is translated to pagan, and pagan is also translated to what? Wicca or wicked. And what do, what do they believe? Not in the Bible. Come on. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. So being dismayed at the signs of heaven would have you observing cycles, have you worshiping the rebirth of the sun when the sun never dies. Read on. For the heathen are dismayed at them. All right, so now give me link number six. Give me link number six. Watch this. So let's find out how this happened to us. Read that for me. This is, this is one of my favorite definitions. Uh, got this from the elder. He taught it in one of his classes, and I haven't let it go since then. Watch this. Supersessionism, also called replacement theology or fulfillment theology. So we hear all of this in the Christian church. That's it. Oh, you don't have to do the law has been fulfilled. You know, uh, um, Israel ain't here. We now, we spiritual Israel. That's replacement theology, read. Is a Christian theological doctrine which describes the theological conviction that the Christian church has superseded the nation of Israel. So they was convicted in their spirit that they have superseded the nation of Israel. They just huh? felt it in their bones. Hey, the Lord told me that, hey, 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 Israel ain't no more. We the people now. The hell is this? Read on. Assuming their role as God's covenanted people. Who told them that was their role? 
Who? That's like you taking somebody's will with their, their last name on it and saying it is yours. That's stealing. Right. Read. Thus asserting that the new covenant through Jesus Christ has superseded or replaced the Mosaic covenant exclusive to Jews. So now that's why you don't have to read the Old Testament. That's been replaced. You just follow what we say now. Go ahead. Supersessionist theology also holds that the universal Christian church has replaced ancient Israel. So as now your, your suit, your tight wearing suit, pork chop eating pastor says that they have replaced Israel and God love everybody. That's that John 3.16 mentality. It comes from supersessionism, meaning a, a sneaky way of saying I'm going to take all of your stuff. Go Who ahead. does that? Supersessionist theology also holds that the universal Christian church has replaced ancient Israel as God's true Israel and that the Christians, including Gentiles, have replaced the biological bloodline of the ancient Israelites as the people of God. Wow. Wow. So now we understand that Christianity does what? Doesn't teach the Bible. Right. It uses the Bible out of context to teach supersessionism. Right. Or replacement theory. Or right. fulfillment theory. All right? So now, what are they replacing? They're replacing the five categories of laws. All right? That's ridiculous. You got the ceremonial, the civil, the dietary, the moral, and the sacrificial. All right? It's Christianity says you don't got to do none of that. You don't, you don't find that do none suspicious. Of that. All right? Um, so now, give me the next, the next um, photo that I have. Uh, the will of the year. So now this is where everything is about to get sticky. Give me that, the will of the year. Let's go! So we're going to talk about these ceremonial laws that have been replaced with hella days that we ignorantly call holidays. All right? So what we have here is the will of the year. Can you blow that up a little bit? In which heathens or pagans used to worship the cycle of the year. You remember that? Um, so the one at the top is, is called Yule. Yule. Then you have Imbalak. You remember that name, Ostara? That was, that was one of the names that we read earlier, Ostara. Uh, over here you have Beltane, mm -hmm. Litha, uh, Lashamas, I can't pronounce that. Then you have Maybon and Samhain, or what we pronounce as Samhain. All right? So all of these are, guess what? These are eight Sabbaths of witches. Damn, son. Where'd you find this? I'm going to see if you can. I'm going to read the, uh, what's down to the bottom. Okay. It say, I'll read at, it. It's, yeah, it says, okay. as the wheel turns, pagans celebrate Eight holy days as sacred. Oh, I'm sorry, as Sabbaths. So I'm going to read it again. As the wheel turns, pagans celebrate eight holy days as Sabbaths. Huh? So if you're celebrating all of those things that we just read, those are witches' Sabbaths that you've been keeping your whole life and not the Sabbath or Feast of the Lord. Congratulations. Right? You played yourself. It says, some say the lady of life rules. I can't see that. Let me see. Is that Spain? Uh, rules Spain. Oh, no. Uh, spring and okay. summer. Right. Rules spring and summer. While the lady, while the, well, the Lord, Lord of, of the death dead. and resurrection rules fall and winter. Mm -hmm. Others say the divine son known is known of the as known as the great mother at B Yule born, born of born. the great as is born of the great mother at Yule lies in ecstasy with the young goddess at Beltane and sacrifices himself in life's cause at Lamas so when you worship when, when you keep these rituals of the year this is what it represents. It represents uh, uh, a pagan celebration of the eight days. It represents death and resurrection. All right? It, it's, it's going into fertility 
and uh, sexual immorality of these pagan deities. Damn. All wow. right. So now give me that link. Give me that link that's under there. Watch this. This right here is going to help you clear it up some. If you are keeping these witches Sabbath, if you keep Christmas, New Year's, Easter, all of those are pagan Sabbath. Guess what? You might be a pagan. You might be following after Wiccan. Come on. You're going to learn today. Go ahead. Wiccans honor both the lunar and solar cycles of nature through various rituals and celebrations called sabbats and esbats. The changing of seasons as the sun travels across the sky and the earth turns upon its axis are marked through various celebrations and traditions called sabbats. Okay, so the they, they pause. They're telling you that as the sun, or as it says, as it rotates, they worship certain things called sabbath. Play it again. Bruh. Changing of seasons as the sun travels across the sky and the earth turns upon its axis are marked through various celebrations okay, and pause. traditions. So you see at the top is, it says vernal equinox around March 21st. Then you have the winter solstice around December. I'm, I'm going the other way. So let's start at uh, December, the winter solstice. Then you have in March, the vernal equinox. In spring, then you have the summer solstice in June. Uh, and I don't see the other one, but right here it says autumn. I can't see the other one, but play on. Okay, we got it. Autumn equinox. Autumn equinox. Come on. The solar cycle is broken into eight sabbats and is collectively referred to as the wheel of the year. Okay, Paul. So the wheel of the year. these eight sabbaths are called the wheel of the year. So guess what? Everybody that has been celebrating these holidays have been pushing that wheel of the year. It's like a, a voodoo. When you play with that Ouija board, the Ouija board moves on its own. Guess what? You are those parts on that Ouija board that's moving on its own. You don't even know why you're doing it. You're just moving, just moving, ignorantly moving. Hey. Possessed by spirits. Come on. The marking and passing of time, but the never-ending cycle of nature's fertility. There are two equinoxes, two solstices, and four minor points that fall in between each of these in the wheel of the year. Sabbats are celebrations that bring the community together to recognize the change in seasons. So they recognize the, the change in seasons with their Sabbath. They're telling you they're worshiping the signs of heaven, which the Lord told us not to be dismayed after. There is powerful niggardry at work. Right. Read. I mean, go ahead. ...to the rotation of earth and the cycle of birth, maturity and death. Many followers believe that these eight holy days connect them to Mother Earth and her bounty. So pause. Mother Earth, that's, that's Maya, the goddess Mother Earth. That goes back, um, I forget which month it was. May. May? So that right there, Mother Earth. May Day. Earth. That's why they call it um, Earth Day. May Day. Mother Earth. They, they are telling you they're worshipping ancient deities. Go ahead. Earth. This is the beginning of the pagan year, often referred to as the Day of the Dead or the Witch's New Year. All right, you can take that down. Um, so basically what has been happening, that we have been mechanically participating on this wheel and we pledge our allegiance to many gods while Damn, saying what? Wow. Thank you, Jesus. That's what the Christian church do. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for, for coming down my chimney and giving me presents. Thank you, Jesus, for that jack o' lantern on my front porch. Thank you, Jesus, for giving me a rabbit that laid eggs. All of that. Thank you, Jesus. Give me that in John chapter 4, verse 22. John chapter 4 and verse 22. Bring it out. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. That's right. All right, so we're going to help y'all figure out what it is that y'all worship. We know who we worship because it's written in the Bible. We're getting it straight out of the context. Hey. Christianity, open the book, get one line, read it, close it. Talk for two hours. All right, give me link number eight. Link number eight. The wheel of the year, the calendar of pagan festivals explained. Uh, 
Oh, not up here. Just give me the definition of, uh, let's uh, type in will of the year and see what comes up. Will of the year. It might pull up some movies. Um, yeah, go to Wicca right there. Keep going. Let's see what that says. Yep, okay. I think I can use that. Read that. The will of the year is an annual cycle of seasonal festivals. Pause. The will of the year is an annual cycle of seasonal festivals. Not ordained by the Most High God. Come on. Damn. Observed wow. by a range of modern pagans marking the year's chief solar events. Uh-huh. So Sol what are they worshiping? The solar events. Come on. Solstices and equinoxes and the midpoints between them. Come on. British neo-pagans crafted the will of the year in the mid-20th century, combining the four solar events, or quarter days, marked by many European peoples with four seasonal festivals, cross-quarter days, celebrated by insular Celtic peoples. Okay. Um, go to different paths. Right, right, uh, uh, Dif right oh. yeah. Different paths of modern paganism very may vary regarding the precise timing of each celebration based on such distinctions as the lunar phase and geographic hemisphere all right all right give me um link number nine i'm trying to speed up a little bit all right so the will of the year the will of the year in northern hemisphere some pagans in the southern hemisphere advance these dates by six months because the times are different all right it says Observing the cycle of seasons has been important to many people, both ancient and modern. Contemporary pagan festivals that rely on the will are based on varying degrees on folk tradition. Among Wiccans, each festival is also referred to as a Sabbath. That's what we just went over. So our people have been keeping, I'm going to just say it, Satan's Sabbaths. Right. The devil. Not, not the Lord's Sabbath. Y'all got link nine for me? Yep, play that. Watch this. Why are there 52 cards in a deck of cards? Because there are 52 weeks in a year. And so the four suits in the traditional deck of cards, which you can do like psychic readings with like a tarot deck. Um, diamonds is winter. Clubs is spring. Hearts are summer. Spades are fall. Four suits, four seasons. And also the king, queen, jack, those are called paint cards. And if every paint card has the value of 10, when you add up all the numbers of all the cards, it's 365 for the 365 days of the year. So the pagan roots are everywhere. You just have to access them because for real, a lot of the like rituals that people keep every single year, the holidays people celebrate and stuff, it's mechanical, but these are like big ass rituals to certain gods. And if that's not your God, then like you should really figure out what your indigenous God is and do rituals that support that because you're you're calling in all kinds of help but if it's help that you don't really believe in you're you're doing these rituals for nothing supporting an idea that's like not yours maybe even an idea that caused a lot of harm to you and your ancestors so like you know gobble gobble all right gobble gobble right so give me that psalms 96 verse 5 watch this the book of Psalms, chapter 96 and verse 5. Bring it out. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. You see that? Pagan roots everywhere. In your, in your cards, in your years, in your days. Pagan roots are everywhere. So it, it would behoove you to find out what these ritual practices mean. Because like, like, like the, um, the Edomite said, they could be, you could be calling in powers against you. You understand? All right. Um, give me the, the photo that I have. We're going to read some stuff off this photo right quick. All right. Can you blow it up? All right. Yep. Okay. Read, read what you got, officer. 
Sam Hain, commonly pronounced Samhain, Sal, I mean with cow, means summer's end. All right, so we find out that Samhain means summer's end. Go ahead. It is the pagan new year. Samhain falls halfway between the autumn equinox and the winter solstice on October 31st. And what we call that? We call that Halloween. The devil. Read. Winter solstice, Yule, is the longest night of the year. It is a holiday to celebrate the return of the sun. So when you're burning those Yule logs, understand it represents the winter solstice, one of the longest nights of the year. It celebrates the return of the sun. We read that already. Come on. After the longest night, the night starts getting shorter and shorter. December 20, 21st through 22nd. What, what, what is that around? That's around what we call Christmas time. Christmas. So they have you doing these rituals, but you're really observing the winter solstice. Hey. Come on. Embolic. Embolic, embolic or embolic, pronounced imolk or imolg, is to celebrate the beginning of spring on sunset on January 31st through February 1st. All right. Now watch the next one. Eoster, Ostara, celebrates the spring equinox when flowers start to blossom and bloom and then flaming new life begins. So you got to keep, you got to pay attention to these words. Spring equinox, flowers start to bloom, new life begins. And that right there is what we call the month of uh, April. It's the beginning of our new year. Right. Right. But they're, they're worshiping the equinox. Come on. Beltane or Beltane marks the beginning of summer. It is celebrated on April 30th through May 1st. It is a time to welcome the abundance of the fertile earth after April showers. Right. So during that month, what we have, we got May Day. Right. So let, let me go back a little bit. Um, Yule, Yule, you have Christmas and you, you, you're worshiping the solstice. All right. Or, or Saturnalia. That's what they call it. They call it Saturnalia. Then when you have Embolook, that is Valentine's Day. That's what we know. Those are the rituals that we keep around that time, Embolook. Now you have Ostara, which is, um, I'm sorry, March or early April. And that is in representation of Easter. So come on, go, go with Beltane. Beltane or Beltane marks the beginning of summer. It is celebrated on April 30th through May 1st. It is a time to welcome the abundance of the fertile earth after April showers. Right. So, so now they're talking about um, there's, there's a god, the green man. I, I, I know y'all remember the jolly green giant. Ho, ho, ho. Right. Yeah, that's, that's where that comes from. You understand that green giant? Damn. Wow. The, the green man. Come on. Lithe or Litha is the celebration of midsummer and the summer solstice and the longest day of the year. June 19th through 21st. All right. Uh, let me see. So let's go back, go back to Beltane right quick. I have a note. Um, I, don't, I don't know if you see that IT in my notes. Um, I, I do have a link there. Don't, don't worry about it if, if you can't find it. Um, but in my notes it says, Beltane is a Celtic word meaning the fires of Baal. The fires of Baal. All right. Baal likely refers to the Celtic sun god. All right. The Celts used to light two bonfires before they believe it would purify themselves as well as increase their fertility. So these bonfires, that's what they represent. They're going into fertility. That's it. Come on. Let's go to um, Lith. He was already there. Yes, sir. Lith. Litha. Is the celebration of midsummer and the summer solstice and the longest day of the year, June 19th through 21st. All right. And in that month, we have what we call Father's Day. All right. Go ahead. Lamas, Lagnasada, is a big <gasps> celebration. It is the high point of summer, the harvest time, a time to reflect before autumn. It is celebrated on August 1st. All right, come on. And the last one. Maybon tea is the time of the autumn equinox, and the harvest is winding down. 
The fields are nearly empty because the crops have been plucked and stored for the coming winter, September 21st. All right. Now, all right. So what is it that pagans believe? Pagans believe that nature is sacred and that the natural cycle of birth, growth, death observed in the world around us carries profound spiritual meaning. Uh, I butchered that. So it says nature, pagans believe that nature is sacred and that the natural cycle of birth, growth, and death observed in the world around us carry profound spiritual meanings. All right, human beings are seen as a part of nature, all right, uh, along with the trees, stones, plants, and everything else that is of the earth. All right, so uh, give me the photos, I mean the, the, the book, the pictures of the book now. All right. Now, we're going to connect everything that we read in the beginning. When we read through the, uh, the months, all of this is going to make sense now. So, um, Samhain. We're going to start there. So, the month of Samhain is celebrated, and it is it's observed with certain pagan rites. All right? So, let's put everything together. Uh, so, again, Samhain was... Halloween, and it's observed October 31st, we call it the Day of the Dead, and it represents the rebirth of the sun. So where does this come from? Go down to uh, Tammuz, down to the bottom of the page. Uh, you, yep, go back up, right there, Tammuz. Read that for me. Yes, sir. Tammuz, a fertility god worshipped in Mesopotamia, Syria, and Palestine, equivalent to Osiris in Egypt and Adonis of the Greeks. His consort was the goddess Ishtar, Astarte or Ashtaroth. Their cult involved lic licious rites, licentious rites. Tammuz was supposed to have been killed by a wild boar while sheep herding his flocks. His wife rescued him from the underworld. Watch this. His death was taken to represent the onset of winter. Okay, watch this. It says, Tammuz's death represents the onset of what? Winter. Winter. Remember that. When Tammuz died, the sun died. The sun went down. That's, that's when things begin to get cold. You get the longest day. The, I'm sorry, the longest nights. Read. Right? The long dry season was broken by spring rains when he came to life again. So the spring represents Tammuz coming back to life. Remember these pagans represent, I'm sorry, the pagans worship magic, seasons, and cycles of life. Message. Read. The fourth month of the Babylonian and later Jewish calendar was named for him, June to July. Pull it up. Okay. The only mention of him in the Bible occurs in connection with the custom of women mourning for him, which being observed. Pull it up to the top. Go over to the right hand side. Yeah. Which being observed. Which being observed at the very gate of the temple of the true God seemed to the prophet one of the most abominable idolatries. His Greek name, Adonis, is derived from the Phoenician and Hebrew word for Lord. All right. So now, 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 we're going to put everything together. Give me that next link. Learn today. Give me the next link. Watch this. This is going to get interesting. So we just, we found out about Tammuz and what he represents. Now we read about, we read, we read about Tammuz and Ezekiel, but we read about Somebody else in the beginning of the Bible, and we're going to find out that they're all connected. They're one big happy family that you've been worshiping. You've all been worshiping the first occult family in the Bible to this day. Um, go down to um, the part that I had. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going right here. Mm -hmm. um, start at Tammuz. Um, matter of fact, start it after Nimrod. Watch this. Yes, sir. After Nimrod died, Semiramis claimed to be impregnant by the rays of the sun. All right, so there's that sun again. Nimrod died. Semiramis claimed to be pregnant by a ray of sun. Huh? Her dead sun god husband. 
and to be the and to be expecting the son of the sun god the child that she gave birth to was named Tammuz. So, so in Ezekiel, they, they knew this and they were worshiping after this. It says, after Nimrod died, Semiramis is claimed to be pregnant, uh, be pregnant, pregnant by the ray of sun. She got pregnant by a ray of sun, her dead sun god husband. So, sun god husband is who? Nimrod. When you worship the sun, you're worshiping Nimrod. Or what they call Ra. And to be expecting the son of the sun god. Hmm. They're expecting a son of the sun god. Hmm. Read. The child that she gave birth to was named Tammuz. All right, come on. Tammuz was also worshipped as a god when he was 40 years old. Okay. He was, oh, I'm sorry. Tammuz was also worshipped as a god. And when he was 40 years old, he was gored to death by a wild boar. Okay, so this is what happened to Tammuz. It says, this is the, the, uh, the ancient belief that Tammuz was uh, gored to death by a wild boar. Come on. This was the basis for a tradition which was begun in his honor. Okay, now watch this. This right here, if you keeping this, you might be a pagan. Read. To fast for 40 days, a day for each year of his life. For Tammuz, 40 days, a day for each year of his life. Come on. Those who worship the son of the sun god then set aside 40 days of weeping for Tammuz. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We read this earlier. We read this earlier. It's going to make sense. Come on. They celebrated Lent. Who celebrated Lent? They celebrated Lent. So if you worship in Nimrod or Tammuz or Semiramis, you celebrate Lent. How, why do they do this in the Christian church? They celebrate Lent. What, where does it come from? Ancient Babylon. Come on. Right. One day for each year of his incarnation. So now you know why you celebrate Lent. Why it is a 40-day Span because it is a representation of every year. One, uh, I'm sorry, every year that Tammuz lived, you you keep it forty days. Come on, Message. in which they would deny a worldly pleasure for his pleasure in the afterworld. And that's what they tell you Lent means. You have to 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 deny a worldly pleasure during Lent. The Christians give up their worldly pleasures. Go go back to the other. Go back to the other one. Um, okay, um, worldly read? pleasures. So now, read, read where it says Michael Rudd rudely uh, explains very rudely. Watch this. Scroll. There you go. After many years, Michael Rudd explains very rudely. After many years, his mother Semiramis died. The gods looked favorably on the mother of the god and sent her back to earth as spring as the spring fertility goddess. So Semiramis comes back now as the spring fertility goddess. When is spring? In the beginning of the year? Yes, sir. What month is that called? Ostara? We're going to find it out. Read. Always depicted as an exaggeratedly endowed bare-breasted queen of sexual desire. Hmm. We're getting somewhere now. Come on. Semiramis, the queen of heaven. Semiramis is what? The queen of heaven. Come on. Was born again as the goddess Easter. Wow. Or Astarte. Come on. As she emerged from a giant egg that landed in the Euphrates River at the at sunrise on the Sunday after the vernal equinox. So you got the Sunday, you got Easter, you got uh, a giant egg that landed in the Euphrates. This is all starting to make sense now. Right. Where are we getting these rituals from? Come on. To proclaim her divine authority, she changed a bird into an egg-laying rabbit. She changed the what? She changed a bird into an egg-laying rabbit. If you paint your eggs or you celebrate Easter, you are worshiping after Nimrod, Semiramis, and Tammuz. And guess what? You might be a pagan. Right. Come on. As the cult developed, the priest of Easter would impregnate young virgins on the altar of the goddess of fertility at sunrise on Easter Sunday. Oh, wow. What were they doing on Easter Sunday? They would impregnate young virgins on the altar of the goddess of fertility at sunrise on Easter Sunday. Come on. 
A year later, the priest. A pre- year what? A year later, the priests of Easter would sacrifice those three month old babies on the altar in front of the sanctuary and dye Easter eggs in the blood of the sacrificed infants. Wait a minute. Read on. The 40 days of Lent, or weeping for Tammuz, starts the Easter fertility season. The festivities culminate on Easter Sunday when the priest of Easter slaughtered the wild boar that killed Tammuz and the entire congregation would eat the ham on Easter Sunday. So that's where you get your Easter ham from. All of that right there is paganism. Root. You Christians are pagans. Pagan, pagan, pagan. All right. Uh, Let's see. I think. That's what we needed. Um, so now go to, um, go to Ezekiel chapter 8. Watch this. You're going to learn today. Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 14. Let's read it out of the scripture. The book of Ezekiel chapter 8 and verse 14. Bring it out. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north. Mm -hmm. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. Wow. The women were weeping for Tammuz. They understood what they were doing. They they recognized the traditions and they, they did it. They were weeping for Tammuz. They knew what they were doing. Come on. Then said he unto me, hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than these. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house. And behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, there were about five and twenty men with their backs toward the temple of the Lord and their faces toward the east. And they worshiped the sun toward the east. They worshiped the what? The sun toward the east. So now they're they're talking about worshiping Nimrod. That's the father. That's the son. So when it says, uh, uh, weeping for Tammuz, that's the son of the sun god. Damn. Tammuz is the son of the sun god. Nimrod is the sun god. Come on. Then he said unto me, hast thou seen this, O son of man? It is a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit abom- the abominations which they commit here. All right, keep going. For, for they have filled the land with violence and have returned to provoke me to anger. And lo, they put the branch to their nose. Come on. Therefore, will I also deal in fury. Mine eyes shall not spare. Neither will I have pity. And though they cry in mine ears with a loud voice, yet will I not hear them. All right. So putting the branch to the nose, it was a way to show your defiance or your loyalty or allegiance to another God. All right, and we're going to find out a little bit more about that too. So now, photo 11, photo 11. All right, so now, I'm going to go back a little bit in my lesson, keep that up. All right. So, where I'm going now, I'm going back to February, all right? Um, February is named for an ancient Roman festival of purification called Februa. All right. Valentine's Day, Feast of St. Valentine, Modern Romance Day, Cupid, the son of Venus and Mars, patron deity of intercourse. All right. So what was another name that we found for um, Venus? If we can remember Venus. This is Cupid, the son of Venus and Mars. And these are my notes. Let me look up Aries real quick. Give me one second. I have no internet. All right, uh, let me move on. Let me go back. Let me find another one real quick. Uh, Let's go to March. March. It says, March is the third month. It's the 12th and first Hebrew month, approximately. March is named after Mars, the Roman god of war, a.k.a. Ares. Ares uh, had six children with Aphrodite, 
Zeus is the father of Ares. So now, let's see if we can find Zeus up there. So we got Zeus. You see Zeus under the Greek. Uh, that's during the Greek captivity. Zeus would be who? Go up to the top. Greece is the equivalent of Nimrod, the Lord of Heaven. All right. Now, um, another name for Tammuz at this time would be Dionysus. That's one of the names that we pointed out earlier in the class. Go over to Aphrodite. Aphrodite would be who? Semiramis, the queen of heaven. All right. Uh, let's see. Damn. Wow. Go to, let's go to, can, can y'all, can you go back to the, um, I need you to switch between the, the white photo with the months on it and this one right here. And I want to go to April. You got that in your notes, officer? Can you read April? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. April, named after goddess Aphrodite, a.k.a. Venus. All right. It says April was named after Aphrodite. All right. Come on. Around the 5th century, the Anglo-Saxons referred to April as Oster Manath or Esther Manath. A reference to the goddess Aoster, whose feast was celebrated during the month. All right, now go down to the quadrodecimin controversy. Easter, sometimes March, see quadrodecimin controversy, takes place, takes the place of the first three feasts of God. Mm -hmm. Come on. Palm Sunday, the sixth Sunday of Lent, Holy Monday, Holy Tuesday, Holy Wednesday, or Spy Wednesday, Maundy, Maundy Thursday, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and Holy Saturday, or Black Saturday. All right, so, so you see right there it says Palm Sunday. The Christian church, they keep Palm Sunday, right? But that's six Sundays of Lent. Now we find out that Lent is what? It's a precursor to the worshiping of Tammuz. Right. All right? That's it. Good Friday, same thing. Good Friday, Easter Sunday, or sunrise service. Why are all these things tangled up together right here in April? Go back to the blue photo. Where is Aphrodite? Aphrodite, that's the same equivalent as Semiramis. All right. Um, and when we read earlier, it said that she got impregnated by what? A ray of sun. Right. Sun rays. Right. And then she floated down on the Euphrates with a what? And a giant a egg. A giant egg that by which she turned a bird into a rabbit. An egg laying rabbit. All right. So now what? Go go back. Go back to the to the other photo. It says uh Easter Sunday. We're in April. Yeah, right right there, blow it up. It Scroll up a little bit, a little bit more. Yep. Easter Sunday. Easter egg hunts and bunnies. And what is it? Easter egg hunts and bunnies. Read the rest of Fertility it. Fertility rites of the goddess Ishtar. So there's a lot of names that's been changed around. Ishtar, Easter, Ostara. But they mean the same thing. And what? They are in uh, worship of one family. Right. One family. Nimrod, Semiramis, and Tammuz. All right. So let's go to... Let's go to May. According to the blue picture, uh, Ishtar is the Babylonian uh, rendition of Semiramis. Message. Right. Babylonian. All right. Let's go to May. May. Named after the Greek goddess Maya, Maya was considered a nurturer on and an earth goddess. Okay. Keep going. May Day, a.k.a. Beltane, Celebrated by picnics, collected flowers, made into wreaths with fruits to represent fertility and new life. Mm -hmm. To keep until Midsummer's Eve when they are burnt in a bonfire. All right, so go to the maypole. Maypole. Maypole, phallic symbol representing fertility, is a branch from a fruit tree. Now, I couldn't find the exact, I couldn't find the exact um, rendition of it, but it was said that when Tammuz was gored by that um, wild boar, that Semiramis found all of his parts except for his phallic. That was the only thing that was missing, the phallic. So now, during May Day, 
that's supposed to be you finding that phallic and, and, and dressing that phallic up. All right? So that's what that goes into. It represents fertility. All right? And then it says what? The, the, the maypole is what? It is a branch from a fruit tree. It's a what? A branch from a fruit tree. Okay, come on. Usually pomegranate or almond bearing tender young leaves decorated with flowers, fruits, and colorful ribbons and adorned with a small files of honey. So a lot of times with these Greek statues, you see those, those leaves on them and that's what they represent. They're representing going back to Tammuz. They, these things are all intertwined. The nations know that. The, the real Wiccans, they know these things, but we don't. All right? Them leaves be little, too. They're cursed. Exactly. All right. Where are we at? The hell is this? Go down to, go down to June. June. Named after the Roman goddess Juno, the god of marriage and childbirth. Okay. Juno. And the wife of Jupiter, king of the gods. Okay. So Juno is the wife to Jupiter. Go back to the um go back to the blue. The blue photo. Right. It's on the Rome. All right. It says Jupiter. Um Jupiter is Nimrod. Right. It says uh named after Roman god Juno, the god of marriage and childbirth, and Jupiter, king of the gods. So who is Jupiter? Jupiter. Nimrod. And uh, na under the nations, it says that Nimrod is Jupiter. All right. So throughout the years, what we have, we find out that their names changed, but their rituals did not. Right. So we've been ignorantly worshiping all of these things, not knowing that they go back to Nimrod. It says right. Nimrod was a mighty hunter before the Lord. And it seems as if he's still doing his job today. Come on. Right. Um, where are we at? Where are we at? Second Maccabees. Okay, read uh, read Second Maccabees. Second Maccabees, chapter six and verse one. Bring it out. Not long after this, the king sent an old man of Athens to compel the Jews to depart from the laws of their fathers and not to live after the laws of God. And to pollute the temple in Jerusalem and to call it the temple of Jupiter Olympus. The temple of what? Of Jupiter Olympus. So who are they still worshiping out there? Nimrod. Nimrod. Still worshiping out the Nimrod after another name in a different captivity. Message. Read on. And that in Gerizim the, of Jupiter, the defender of strangers, as they did desire that dwelt in the place. The coming in of this mischief was sore and grievous to the people, for the temple was filled with riot and revelings by the Gentiles, who dallied with harlots and had to do with women within the circuit of the holy places. And besides that, brought in things that were not lawful. The altar also was filled with profane things which the law forbiddeth. Mm -hmm. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days. Neither or what? Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. Right, because that's that replacement theory. That's where it started. It wasn't lawful for you to call yourself a Jew or to keep the feast. You had to keep the new traditions and rudiments of the world or that new form of paganism. That's it. All right. Um, and go ahead. And in the day of the king's birth every month, they were brought by bitter constraint to eat of the sacrifices. And when the feast of Bacchus was kept, on. the Jews were compelled to go in procession to Bacchus carrying ivy. Carrying what? Ivy. So what we just read is that, um, well, what we read that where it says um, about the, the plant. The maypole. Right. The Small may. The phallic, the phallic symbol. Uh, let me read it again so I don't slaughter it. If you get there before I do, you can go ahead. Yes, sir. The maypole, phallic symbol representing fertility, is a branch from a fruit tree. Is it what? A branch from a fruit tree. Come on. Usually pomegranate or almond bearing tender young leaves decorated with flowers, fruits, and colorful ribbons 
and adorned with small files of honey, sweet wine, and olive oil, all of which symbolize fertility. Right. So now we're finding out, again, those leaves, they represent fertility. All right. When you uh, go back to the, uh, to the blue chart uh, under the Phoenicians, that's Tammuz is known as Bacchus. Right. So they're right. celebrating Bacchus. They're worshiping Tammuz again. I'm glad you brought that out. That's what I wanted. I wanted to get there. All right. So pull that up where we at. Bacchus, right there. So that's under the Phoenicians. Bacchus or El, that's, that would be Nimrod. And then you have Semiramis. At that time, was called Astarte. So all of these names throughout history, they, they change, right? But they're still talking about the same family, right? right? What was you just reading? Maccabees? Yes, sir. Second Maccabees 6. All right. Um, pull, up, pull up that plant. Pull up the plant right there. The ivy. So I know a lot of times we see those. Uh, sometimes the reef, the reefs are made out of those things right there. Right. But you got to understand what they represent. They're going back to those ancient traditions. Traditions, all right? Um, let's see. I can't see my links. Um, there's a link under there that says Bacchus. Is that, that's, is that, that a link of the, um, I think it is that. Okay, read that. Bacchus, ancient Roman deity of wine. Bacchus was the Roman god of agriculture, wine, and fertility, equivalent to the Greek god Dionysus. Right, so go back. So Bacchus is a quick, equivalent to the Greek god Dionysus. Let's see that. Dionysus. You see it in Greek? Who is, who is Dionysus? Tammuz. Tammuz. All of this is, 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 it hasn't changed. The only thing that changes your mind, Christians still worship Tammuz. Root. Christians worship the sun god. Right? They don't worship out the Christ. Go back. You're going to learn today. Dionysus was said to be the last god to join the 12 Olympians. Sad, supposedly, Hestia gave up her seat for him. His plants were vines and twirling ivy. His plants were what? Vines and twirling ivy. All right. He carried a pine cone top staff, and his followers were goat footed satyrs and meonads. Right. So, so now we find out when, when it says that they were forced. Uh, go to Ezekiel 8 and 17. Watch this. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 8 and verse 17. Bring it out. Then he said, then he said unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here? What are they doing? For they have filled the land with violence. And have returned to provoke me to anger. How? And lo, they put the branch to their nose. They do what? They put the branch to their nose. Uh-huh. So what is that Th talking about? Go ahead. Therefore, will I also deal in fury. Mine I will not spare. Neither will I have pity. That branch. What is that branch going into? That's representing who? Dionysus, Tammuz, that ivy that we talked about. It's, it's, it's idolatry. Carrying the branch in honor of the sun. Right, covering their faces with the branch, or, or to inhale a pleasant smell from the branch, protecting themselves from the plague and the punishments of God. Root is an act of defiance against God, a gesture of humility before another deity, a symbol of their recognition that their life depends on the sun. Root. All right. Gonna learn today. So now Ezekiel. I'm sorry. Exodus chapter 34. Let's go. The book of Exodus, chapter 34 and verse 12. All praises. Take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land whither thou goest. Right. So here's another one. It says, take heed to yourself. Pay attention to the things that you're learning. Pay attention Hurry. to the things that you celebrate without knowing why you do them. Come on. Lest it be for a snare in the midst of thee, but ye shall destroy their altars. Break their images and cut down their groves. And that's what we're doing here today. We're showing you that those worldly tra traditions are called witches' sabbaths.
That's the, the, right. The eight high days for witches, and you keep them. The Bible says, suffer not a witch to live. Right? Right. But what do we do? We, we keep up the tradition of, of Easter, of Halloween, of, of Christmas, and all of these things. Right? Valentine's Day. Right. Right? Read on. Verse 14. For thou shalt worship no other god. For the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. Lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land. And they go a whoring after their gods. And that's what has happened to the Israelites. We went a whoring after every other god except the God of Israel. Our God. We worship all these other gods that look nothing like us. And then when you tell our people... Hey, Christianity don't teach the Bible. They use the Bible out of context to teach Christianity. They don't believe you. Right. They don't want to hear you. Oh, we don't have to keep the commandments. That's done away with. All I got to do is believe. Believe in what? Right. Nimrod, Semiramis, and Tammuz? Come on. The hell is this? And do You're sacrifice unto their gods. And one called thee, and thou eat of his sacrifice. And thou take of their daughters unto thy sons. And their daughters go a whoring after their gods, and make thy sons go a whoring after their gods. Right. So that's what's happened. That's what's happened to our people. So now, before we close out, give me Exodus chapter 20, verse 3. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 3. Bring it out. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Is that not the first commandment? That's right. right. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Why? I wonder why that's number one. Because when we came coming to this world, we born under sin. We we we're giving those other gods. We're spoon fed all of those other gods and the rituals that observe those gods. Right? Read on. Thou shalt thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Right. Give now, me um, Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Watch this. Bring it out. So everything that we encompass goes into this scripture right here. Read. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Read it from the top again. Verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day. So when it says remember the Sabbath, it's not only talking about the seventh day Sabbath. It's talking about all the other Sabbaths that we read in today's lesson. All of them in Leviticus, some in Maccabees, some in Esther. Those are the Lord's Sabbath. And if you're not keeping the Lord's Sabbath, guess what? You might be a pagan. So, in today's lesson, I hope you can recalibrate your mind and find a place of repentance for the Lord. Give me that one more time. Um, Psalms 96. Let's go. This whole lesson encompassing one scripture. Watch this. Psalms chapter 96 and verse 5. For all the gods of the nations are idols. Come on. But the Lord made the heavens. And with that, we say shalom. Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. Oh!